Hey, welcome back to the show, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Let's dial in Slay's awesome Ronin blood guitar tone using the Marshall DSL 20H, a few EQ pedals, and we're going to capture the recording through the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X. This album is just so much in your face from start to finish, and there's no breaks. Like, it just is relentlessly, doesn't let up, and it's just brutal all the way. And it's got this really old guitar tone, which is super cool. It's so much reverb involved. I've actually dialed up the amp to the full just to make it sound like it's in the ballpark. There's just so many things to talk about with this album to any Slayer fan or any metal fan in general. Like the budgets weren't really there, that the, the tracking was up and down, that the guitar parts aren't perfect. You can hear mistakes. You can hear the timings off in parts. And to me, that's just what makes it so cool. It's it's really unique. It's got something to offer. It's not done on Pro Tools where everything's just perfect and, you know, drums are like a click track. Uh, so let's just talk about how we've EQ'd and dialed this tone in. I've pretty much got the digital reverb in the 20H. It's up full, and that puts you in the ballpark with the album. There's so much reverb on those guitars, so much ambience. Uh, the resonance and bass on this amp, I've just turned right down. I've found with this amp having the bass around two, I use the resonance then just to give the sound a little bit more meat. The bass being on two makes the amp respond fairly neutrally, I find. It's... It's just not too heavy. They are inherently just got a heavy bottom end to these amps. So having the bass on two really just seems to balance things out. The mids are backed off a little bit from neutral and the treble and the presence is just up slightly than I thought it would have been. I've had to back the gain right off to three and usually at around three on this amp, things start to thin out a little bit and it doesn't have that meaty sort of sound to it anymore. Uh, to compensate for that, I've turned the volume up just under halfway and that really sort of it does just thicken things up and make the gain a little bit more usable in those lower settings. And to work with the gain that's been backed off there, in the front end of the amp, I've got the MXR6 band EQ, and you can see the settings there. It's just shaped like a frown, and that's pushing the mids, and that actually adds a lot more gain to the signal at the front end as well. And for fine-tuning the guitar sound, I've just got the MXR10 band in the effects loop on the floor, and that's just boosting the lows just slightly and scooping the mids and adding a little bit more shimmer to the top end. Other than that, I'm just running the Boss NS2 noise suppressor in the effects loop and front end as you can see there. For anyone that's been watching this series for a while, you know that I've been capturing most of these guitar recordings using the Meserecto 112 V30 in the corner with an SM57 in front of it. And that's just pretty much how I've been recording everything. Look, anyone that's familiar with live miking and recording their gear at home knows that you, you can't just do it whenever you feel like it. You can't just practice how you want without annoying somebody. So to overcome those problems for myself, I reached out to Two Notes Audio Engineering and they were kind enough to send me a Torpedo Captor X 
just to try it and use on the channel and share with you guys. Its main role is to act as a virtual mic cabinet, eliminating the need to use microphones. So for any of you guys out there that have your tube amps and you can't play it due to noise restraints, or you just want to record using it and you're not sure about your microphone placement, you can't get a good sound, so the Torpedo doesn't just have the one feature, it's actually got a built-in attenuator so you can jam with your friends at medium levels or you can sit in your bedroom with the amp cranked and have it really low or you can just have it full noise if you wish. Quick rundown with the unit on the back, you've got the attenuator switch, you've got the two XLR outputs to either run the unit in stereo, or you can have it in dual mono situations where you can have one go to your audio interface or one to the front end of the house if you're playing in clubs and you don't want to mic up your cab. And on the front of the panel, you've got an output volume control. You've got a voice dial, which actually just emulates uh, different air around the cabinet and the space style emulates just different rooms and the amount of ambience that you want to capture in that room and then you've got your headphones output jack so when you plug them in you're actually getting the stereo signal and it sounds really good and beside that you've got the high and low input switch depending on how hard you're driving the amp itself and then with the preset switch you can access six of your favorite presets that you choose just by turning the dial there so with the captor x you also get the software to run on your computer so you can access the 32 different cabinets, the eight mics, eight different rooms and ambience, and then set up all your mics as you wish. You can have them dual mics and stereo, and, and within the software itself, you're not restricted just to use the inbuilt cab simulations that they offer. You can load your own IRs if you wish, and the phone app that you get with it as well is really easy to use, and it's quite intuitive, and any saves that you make go straight to the unit, and then you've got it there just to recall using the dials on the front like I am here. One thing I wanted to do before making this video was to actually authenticate whether the emulated cabs sound like the real thing. Uh, so I went into the store and actually found they did a Mesa Recto 112. So using the desktop app, you can see I just set the microphone and everything exactly on the same axis as I do setting up the Recto cab and it was spot on. It really was excellent and I was so excited to see that. And so I've made some presets in my unit just to simulate the microphone being just off the dust cap, a little bit moved away, and then a third position halfway across the actual cone itself. And this is preset one, just off the dust cap. <laughs> and then a little bit further moved away, probably about an inch or more. and then halfway across the cone. Um, then I took the liberty to mic up the 1936-212 here and use the emulation software that was already built in and... I went through the whole A and B process and I was just blown away how close it is and it just sounds so spot on and realistic. It doesn't sound like a, a cabinet simulation at all. If I back off the reverb on the amp, and now we just use a little bit of the inbuilt ambience within the unit. So it's nice and dry here. Uh, and now we'll just feed in a little bit of the ambience there. And 
and you can just set all your different chambers and halls and i've actually got this set to a crypt which is really cool and uh look it's just blown me away how good the torpedo capt x really is and how versatile it is for all my applications in here and i can just run it however i wish and just run the attenuation so i still have it coming out my speaker but not so loud the fact you can load your own irs into it and it works as an attenuator as well for your amps <laughs> So all that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. I just had to share this with you. It's such a great product that just suits me to a T and I'm sure so many of you out there that have the same issues. I get loads of questions from you guys just saying like, I want an amp that I want to gig with friends. I want to just play out in clubs, but at the same time, I live in an apartment and I don't want to destroy my neighbors. So, and now I've used the Torpedo Captor X. I'll just say to you guys, get whatever you want. Just, you know, get a, get a Krankenstein there was no guitar lead long enough before but now you can use it in a bedroom so all that being said thanks so much again for tuning in take care and I'll see you again next week bye now